Japanese swords have earned their reputation as objects of art. But their beauty is sharpened at the edge of a blade designed as a lethal weapon. Iaido is the martial art that draws together form and function. This is Samurai Spirit and I'm your host Nicholas Perez. Today we are here in Hakone, beautiful location. Although it is raining a little bit, it's not going to hold me back from showing you something very special today. When you hear the word Samurai, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? It's obviously the Katana Sword. Now the Katana Sword is the symbol of the Japanese warrior Samurai. And today I'm here to find out exactly how they draw the sword and how they compete in that ancient form called Iaido. Now let's go and find out because right up there it's just about to start. Nicholas Pettis is a professional in formalized fighting. He came to Japan at the age of 18 to study the Kyokushin style of karate and went on to win international titles. Through the Samurai Spirit series of programs Nicholas has encountered a wide range of martial arts. This time Iaido. A train ride of two hours from Tokyo brings you to Hakone. Every May, nine of the top Yaido masters from across Japan are invited to take part in a tournament at the Hakone Shrine. The winner is awarded the honor of offering a demonstration to the deity of the shrine. <laughs> As you can see, we're now inside the shrine, and this is the dojo for Yaido. And I think the tournament is just about to start. Where's his opponent? I thought they were gonna be fighting or something. A typical Iaido competition involves a real sword, but only one swordsman at a time. When the time arises, a swordsman executes stylized techniques called kata. The spiritual force electrifies the atmosphere, even though all it leaves behind is the sound of splitting air. Nicholas has come up against many powerful opponents over the years, but none like this. He sought insight from one of the judges. Why Iaido is done uh, by single persons and why they don't have an opponent? Well, that's because we use real swords. So the practice is extremely dangerous. <laughs> real sword, yes. Yes. And that's why we have no opponents. In daily training, we envision ourselves up against an imaginary opponent. I've experienced many styles of martial arts, but never one as mysterious as this. So I decided to visit a dojo to learn the basics of EI. The silence in the dojo is thick enough to cut through. I wonder if they are all seen their imaginary opponents. I think they're right in the middle of practicing a, a basic class. Everyone's doing exactly the same motions, and it's so beautiful. Nicholas has to start with the basics. 
His instructor is Shigeru Sato, a Kyoshi 7th Dan. Sensei, nice to meet you. My name is Nicholas Pettis. I'm looking forward to uh, actually touching a real Japanese sword. I've been told that I could practice with a real Japanese sword today, and I'm really excited about that. Um, where do we start? ああ、そう。because I haven't practiced the Iaido until now, you aren't going to let me touch the real one. Japanese swords were designed and forged so samurai could rely on them at the decisive moment. They're said to be the deadliest swords in the world. Even an iron helmet can be sliced apart by one of these well-made weapons. Nothing remains intact once it comes in contact with a samurai sword. See what it does to a raw egg. In the hands of a master, a samurai sword can be an execution warrant for an opponent. Nowadays, owners of such swords are legally required to register them. Only people with sufficient technique, spiritual strength, and experience are allowed to handle a samurai sword. This is a practice sword. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Draw it out. It, this way? This feels awesome. We'll begin with Reho. Yes, Reho. That means etiquette. Reho is the basis of all martial arts. When practicing, you bow towards the Shinzen, a sort of spiritual altar then to your teacher and to the sword. Hidarite when we were doing all the bowing procedures, we started left, right, left, right. And it was very important to follow that procedure. Why is it uh, done in that way? The purpose is to protect your dominant hand and foot. When sitting down, we start with the left foot. This enables you to stand up immediately and attack when something unexpected happens. The same is true for bowing. We need to be able to use the right hand right away. And after bowing, we return the right hand first, so we're prepared to draw the sword at any time. Shall we begin? Please teach me the basics. Draw the sword slowly. Raise it above the head. Again. You seem to be struggling. This is what happens when your arms are too tense. Relax the arms. Then you'll hear the sword swish. Wow. Do you guys see the speed on that guy? 
when he flicked the sword down? Did you hear the sound? It's almost like he, he, he sliced it right through the air. Whew! Trying hard to swing fast or force a sound will make you tense. Good. You made the sword swish. Yeah. Your first time. <laughs> what that means is you were able to relax. If your arms were tense, you wouldn't hear that sound because the blade would be out of alignment. That swish you made is proof. You were able to relax and bring your sword straight down. I feel good. Iaido includes many stylized forms, or kata. Each requires years of practice to master. This kata is called ukenagashi. Here it is in action. The imaginary opponent is seated to your left, a short distance away. Suddenly he stands and attacks. You parry his sword and strike his shoulder in a downward diagonal action. Proper execution of the kata would disable the opponent. Next, Yamaoroshi, another kata. Your imaginary opponent is seated to your right, close by. Sensing his intention to attack, you immediately use your sword to prevent him from drawing his. What comes next ensures he will not trouble you again. You quickly strike at his chest, force him down, and deliver the coup de grace. Of course, the opponents aren't physically present these days. The kata are based on situations samurai faced in their time. A skillful imaginary opponent won't always come at you the same way every time. You need to be able to adjust your movements to counter his altered forms of attack. Let's give Mai a try. Bring your knee forward and raise the sword. That's it. Chiburi. Chiburi. Sensei, what is Chiburi? You killed the enemy. So your sword is bloody. Chiburi. Chiburi is shaking off the blood. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to do like a repetition of what I've been taught today and then we'll see if I uh, have remembered the finer details of everything. So we'll start now. So it was very, uh, a totally new, brand new experience for me to, ex to try Iaido. And uh, it's a lot more, it's a lot more powerful than I expected. It's a lot more um, energizing and it's a lot more uh, mind opening uh, because it's so um, specific with all the details that you have to work on. 
uh, for me it was uh, it was very 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 fun. Yeah. As I said, you're holding an unsharpened practice sword. It won't cut. This is a real sword. With a real blade. That's a real one? Really? Yes. It's, even if you touch it very lightly, it will cut. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't frighten me at all. Today was your first encounter with the sword. Even though yours was a practice sword, I'm sure you felt something in it. You wouldn't be ready to use a real sword, though, until after seven or eight years of practice. Handling a real sword allows you to encounter a purity of spirit. That is the beauty of Iaido. I think I understand the basic idea of Iaido. Confronting an imaginary opponent, in fact, is really confronting your own limitations. After all, it is a martial art, so there should be some way of testing one's level of skill. And I decided to make an audacious proposal to an Iaido master. This is the place where we're going to meet the master. Chihiro Kishimoto is Hanshi 8th Dan. He's been practicing Yaido for 53 years. I had the opportunity to go and watch the Hachidan uh, tournament recently, and um, it looked like everyone was more or less doing the same thing. Coming from a real fighting background, the Yaido uh, compared to other martial arts seems very. Um, how can I say, uh, simple or plain. Maybe there is some way that we could try to experience something where of course none of us will get killed or hurt or anything, um, but something that could have a little bit more realism into uh, the art that you could show me or teach me today? Yes, <laughs> そういうことはあのあまり意外としてはやらないです。やらないけれどこれでは皆さん見えないでしょう。Kishimoto-sensei right. agreed to go along with Nicholas's proposal. The experiment involves a direct attack. In his own fighting style, Nicholas is known for his instantaneous force, and he's quite a bit younger than Kishimoto, who's 76. They'll be using bamboo swords of the type used in kendo practice. They're padded, but if you get hit, you definitely feel the blow. Nicholas looks for a chance to move in. It looked as if Kishimoto-sensei initiated the attack, but that's not what happened. In fact, he was responding to Nicholas's action. Kishimoto was completely still while Nicholas's right hand started to twitch. The teacher waited until Nicholas moved his hand and responded just 27 hundredths of a second later. Sensing Nicholas's intention, he immediately went for the head. All in just one and a half seconds. Nicholas is not a guy accustomed to being on the losing end, so he asks for another chance. No 
change. Kishimoto Sensei concentrated on reading Nicholas's intent. He remained completely still right up to the moment Nicholas betrayed his intent to attack. Then in a flash, he struck Nicholas's head. On an everyday basis, Yaido practice may appear to be just endless repetition of kata. But this demonstration provides evidence of the results from such training. The more muscular Nicholas was no match for the seasoned and supple master. So, the sensei, I know that this is um, far-fetched from the true way of Yai, but I would like to, maybe if we could do one more simulation of actual fighting where I I try and attack you in a more uh, Western style way, uh, if it's okay. Okay, we'll try things your way. Strike at me, any way you like, and I'll respond. The first two attempts didn't work out for Nicholas. So he asks for the opportunity to try things a different way. Intuiting Nicholas's intent, Kishimoto Sensei turned his body to evade the strike. He then delivered a devastating counterattack. He even had time to reposition his grip on the sword in a way that facilitated his maneuver. Did it hurt? Yeah, <laughs> How did I feel? Look, I tell you the truth, I almost lost my head there. If that had been a real sword, it would have been all over. You know, um, feeling confident as a big guy, I mean, I'm twice his size. And then still attacking with everything I had, full force. If he had still been standing there, I'm sure he would have felt the strike of my, you know, the power of my strike. But um, he was out of the way and sh slashed me right there. That was kind of scary, I'll tell you that. Uh, I, think I, I think I have a little red mark here. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Does it hurt? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Well, see this red area? Boss. This shows the angle of my strike. Yeah. So... Right there, across the chest, down through the bowels. Whew. Yaido adherents practice rigorously to raise their level and master the art of the sword. But their ultimate goal may strike others as a bit of a surprise. The objective of years and years of training is not to handle the sword skillfully, but rather to not draw the sword at all. The ultimate aim of Iaido is to cultivate the spirit and to be able to overcome the enemy without resorting to the sword. In other words, to be able to convince the enemy not to attack and in that way to achieve peace of mind. That's what we're after. It may sound pretentious, but the aim of this martial art is to cultivate the spirit and become better human beings. Victory without lifting a finger. The irony of Yaido plays a major role in its effectiveness as a method of protecting the body and perfecting the mind. The essence of this can be found in the history of Yaido. During the age of the samurai in medieval Japan, battles took place all across the country. 
Of the many weapons available to combatants, the sword was the one of choice for duels and vendettas. The samurai devoted themselves to swordsmanship to protect their lives and pursue justice. One such samurai was the founder of Yaido, Hayashizaki Jinsuke Shigenobu. He established techniques to deal with diverse situations. Those who absorbed his teaching acquired the ability to draw a sword and dispatch an enemy with a single blow. Once the sword was drawn, though, there was no turning back. Unsheathing the sword meant exposing one's own life. By the 17th century, lethal encounters had fallen out of favor as a means of settling disputes. Samurai were left with very few opportunities to draw their swords. That brought about a change in the purpose of training. Rather than improving technique to become even more deadly, the samurai began devoting attention to resolving problems without drawing the sword. The sword became a last resort to pursue justice and protect honor when all else had failed. In all but exceptional situations, a fight to the finish was a fight to be avoided. The samurai spirit cultivated in the Edo period was elevated to a martial art by the legendary swordsman Nakayama Hakudo. This is the man considered by many to be the most powerful figure in the history of Japanese martial arts. He excelled at many of them. And as a swordsman, no one was his equal. Despite his prowess, he pursued a style of Yaido that emphasized the importance of winning without fighting. The master was adamant about refraining from meaningless conflict as much as possible. The sword was simply a tool in the service of the spirit, but the spirit could accomplish on its own transcended the strength of steel. Nakayama's teachings have been passed down across generations to this day. The practice that originated as an effective means of killing evolved into a martial art that is pursued as a method of cultivating the mind. Why did you start Yaido? When I'm practicing Yaido, I forget about everything else. I concentrate completely on Yaido, so it's quite refreshing. As the head of our dojo says, Iaido is all about conquering the enemy within oneself. It's not about confronting an opponent. It's confronting your own imperfections. In sports, the idea is to win. Once you've achieved your goal, that's it. But martial arts training has no end. The more you learn, the more there is to know. The samurai sword is part of the inheritance of generations of Japanese. Its cutting edge is said to be sharper than any blade in the world. The sword is hard but flexible, highly effective for its intended use. Although it's a weapon, it possesses the beauty of a work of art. Some say it's the soul of the samurai. The craftsmen who create these objects have a story of their own to tell. The steel for a Japanese sword is produced from iron sand. A clay furnace is used to melt the iron. The furnace is lined with alternating layers of iron sand and charcoal and is heated to 1400 degrees Celsius. Veteran swordsmiths maintain a vigil over the smelting for three days and three nights. The furnace has to be maintained at a constant temperature. The result of this process is raw steel found at the bottom of the furnace. The swordsmith selects the steel with the percentage of impurities most suited to making blades. The raw steel is broken into pieces. 
Pieces are layered and fired. The steel layers are then hammered together so that the heat distribution is uniform. Then they're folded and hammered again. This process is repeated over and over, creating a blade that consists of countless numbers of layers. That combination makes it both hard and flexible. The blade can be considered as having several sections, each needing different qualities. The swordsmith caters to those variations in adjusting the thickness and forming the shape of the blade. Once the blade is in the desired shape, the smith applies a clay coating. The layer of clay is thick at the back ridge and thin at the edge. The difference in thickness provides different qualities to each section as the blade is heated and quenched. The sharp side cools and hardens rapidly. The back ridge takes considerably longer. That variance helps achieve the paradox of a first-class samurai sword, stability and flexibility. The final stage in the process is sharpening. This is accomplished by a specialist polisher, typically someone whose family has been in the business for generations. Upon receiving the unfinished blade, the polisher will work on it continuously, 10 hours a day, day after day, for three weeks. Once it is properly polished, the blade will be so sharp that even the slightest touch will draw blood. The sword is infused with the spirit of all those who worked on it. And only then is entrusted to one who has been properly prepared to use it. Many people who practice Iaido are mesmerized by the sword itself. Englishman Trevor Jones is among them. He's a seventh Dan the highest rank ever achieved by someone from outside Japan. I think the, uh, the European sword, certainly the broad sword, was more like a hacking weapon, right. uh, breaking bones rather than actually cutting like the Japanese sword, certainly. I think there are two aspects to that. First of all, um, from the spiritual side of things, the Japanese sword in history has represented um, uh, justice and honor and uh, it's a symbol of Japanese spirit whether we think of it as samurai spirit or you know even in modern times on the other hand from a practical point of view it's also a weapon and a training tool Iaido training consists mostly of repeatedly practicing the kata but sometimes the sword does make contact with something else. That practice is called tamishigiri, or test cutting. The target is made by rolling up a tatami mat and soaking it with water. The sensation that cutting it produces is said to be very much like that of a human target. The technique we're about to see is kesagiri, cutting diagonally from the shoulder to the waist on a 45 degree angle. Even for a swordsman experienced with an actual blade, Tamishigiri is a formidable challenge. Poor technique will result in incomplete cuts and may even damage the sword. We asked Norio Furuichi Kyoshi 8th Dan to demonstrate Tamishigiri for us. There's nothing incomplete about the way he does it. 
In the hands of Furuichi Sensei, Kesagiri is a fait accompli. As for the angle, 45 degrees exactly. Test cutting is not usually part of our regular practice. However, it does help one master the correct blade angle. Also, it confirms exactly where the blade should enter and how, because you have an actual target in front of you. That's what it has to offer. I was truly amazed at the level of this master swordsman's technique, but I can't help wonder why anyone would want to work so hard when the idea of Iaido is to avoid drawing the sword. I put this question to the master who had overwhelmed me. Being able to win without actually drawing the sword, uh, I think that is obviously the ultimate uh, goal for EI. Um, could you please go a little bit more deeper in the details of explaining that system or not that concept to me? It's possible to win without drawing the sword. When you have the fortitude or spirit to dominate your opponent, you make him feel like a frog confronted by a snake. In the presence of a skilled master, an inexperienced swordsman will falter and lose the will to fight. By continuing to train both mentally and physically, one eventually will be able to avoid confrontation and to achieve harmony with the world, winning without drawing the sword. Now that doesn't mean having absolute confidence in yourself. It's all about trying to achieve peace and harmony with those around you and spreading that condition even more widely. In order to do that, you have to know yourself. That is my understanding of winning without drawing the sword, and the goal to which I aspire. Winning without drawing the sword. The philosophy of Yaido speaks to the spirit.
Samurai Spirit today introduce you to Iaido. Iaido is the form, the martial arts form, of drawing the Japanese blade, the katana. And as we've seen through the program today, the katana is not just a sword for hacking and slashing. No, it is a symbol of the samurai warrior, which is built on Bushido. And Bushido is the way of the warrior, and which is not just a concept in going out there and fighting. No, it is a concept built on the foundation of protecting oneself. Hence the whole con uh, the concept of avoiding conflict by actually being able to win in a fighting situation <gasps> without having to draw that blade. Now that is the ultimate goal of the idol. And through the sensei's talking and all through everything I experienced through the program, I realized that that concept is actually worthwhile giving some serious thought to. I think that through the practicing of Iaido that we are all able to become better persons because although in the practice with the daily drawing of that blade and fighting against the imaginary opponents we keep chopping away all the rough edges of our rough diamond that lies within ourselves and in the end we all become shining stars which others actually strive to become and that was samurai spirit for today i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did join me again next time when the search continues for the true samurai spirit